In this video, I'm going to take two Arduino codes and join them together so you can see how the structure needs to be maintained as you combine those two codes together. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to open two pieces of code here. and I'm going to go to File, <laughs> Examples, Basics, and Blink. There's one of my programs. And I'm going to go here to File, Example, Basics, Digital Read Serial. All right, so what we've got here is we've got one program that's just gonna blink in a light on and off. We choose the light, it's hooked to 13, set that 13 as an output, and then we're just gonna blink the light with a one second interval each time, and it's just gonna repeat forever. In the digital read serial program, we create a variable called push button, assign that a two, then we set two to be an input on the Arduino. Um, we set up our serial communication, so that we can communicate from the Arduino back to the computer. And then we just have a loop that's looking for the button to be pushed. And if the button's pushed, then it just prints the value of button state on the screen, which is going to be a 1 or a 0. What I want to do is take the blinking and insert it into this program. So not only does it print a 1 or a 0, but it also blinks an LED. So we've got to be careful about how we join these two, because you can't just copy everything from one program to another. So and understanding the structure of a basic Arduino program, you got to pay attention to a few things. First of all, note all the gray text. That's all comments. Comments can either be single line comments, which would be anything with a double slash in front of it, or multi-line comments, which would be a slash with an asterisk, and then we close with an asterisk and a slash. So this is a multi-line comment. This is a single line comment. You can comment large segments of code quickly by just selecting it, going under edit, and just go to comment. And so now you can see all those are commented, and I can uncomment them same way. And you can see there's also a keyboard shortcut you can use. All right, so um, we don't need to pay attention to the comments necessarily for this simple exercise, but generally you want good comments and so know what's going on where. Um, then we've got this, it says int LED 13. Now int is a variable type. Um, that just means we can store a variable between a certain number and a certain number, um, and there are a number of different variables you can use. You generally want to use the smallest variable possible, um, but an int is, tends to be the most common one we see when we p open an Arduino program. Um, you've got the void setup. The setup is basically s telling the Arduino you have some abilities, and this is what we want to, to use in terms of your abilities, and this is what we want to do with it. So for example, we can, with the pins on the Arduino, they can be inputs or outputs, so we can tell the Arduino, hey, we want one of your pins to be an output, or we want a pin to be an input, or we want to use other abilities you have. In this case, we're just going to do inputs and outputs. All right, now, we're using a variable LED. If we look up at the top, LED is number 13, so we're just saying number 13 is going to be an output. We could actually just put number 13 here, and that would have been fine. LED just makes it easier for us to understand what we're actually going to control. Down here at the bottom we've got the void loop and the loop is just running the actual program so we're digital write digital write to pin 13 we're making it high which is on having a short delay and then making it low and a short delay. Now the setup has an opening bracket and a closing bracket and the loop has an opening, opening bracket and closing bracket. All right. And then there's also these empty brackets right after each of these words. This is for returning values. Now with void, you actually can't pass values. So, so the void means that this actually should always be empty. If you need to pass values, you, have to, you can't actually use a void here. Um, now you can't have multiple loops. So if I take this segment of code, this void loop, and copy it, and then I paste it down here further in the program, and I try to compile this and verify it, it tells me that I've redefined loop the Arduino compiler will only allow one setup and one loop. All right, so we can't do that. So when we combine these programs, I'm not actually going to bring the loop and the setup with me. I'm just going to bring the, the individual lines of code that I need. All right, now I'm going over here. So I want to take, I'm going to take the blink and add it into the digital read serial because the blink is a shorter program. It'll be less to copy over. First thing I need is my variable. So I'm going to copy this, and I might as well copy the comment with it. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to add it up in the top of the program where the variables will be. The only thing that should be in the top of the program are things like included libraries um, or various definitions of things and 
variable definition. So we're just going to put only our variables up there at the top. All right, then in our setup, we've got serial.begin. We're going to leave that alone. And we've got one button as an input, but we want another, or one pin as an input. We need the other pin to be the output. So I'm going to take from this program, I'm going to copy the output. I'll take, bring the comment with it. And now we've got one pin declared as an input and one pin declared as an output. At this point, I should be able to compile it and see that everything's going fine, that there aren't any mistakes. And that's correct, done compiling, there were no mistakes. Now the last thing is, I've got to figure out <clears throat> how do I make this light flash only when I press the button? All right, now to do that, we're already testing the push button and then we're printing the push button on the program, or we're printing the push button in the serial window. Well, I need an if statement. I'm going to say if button state is equal to high, and then I'm going to have an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. All right, so what I want to happen has to be within that if statement. So then I'm going to go back over to this program and I'm going to get my high and low. I'm going to put it within that if statement. All right, now if we press the button and it's high, then we should get a flashing LED. All right, now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this verifies correctly, but you can do that in a way that will also organize the code in a nice, neat way, and that's to go up to tools and auto format. It won't auto format if there's a mistake and then I can just verify just to make sure that there's no mistakes. Okay, so this should work. Now, let's just look at the structure one last time. We've got the push button set at 2, the LED is set to 13, all right, this is one part of the code. All right, second part of the code is my setup, and in my setup, I'm setting the serial output. I've got a push button, which is pin number 2 as the input. I've got LED, which is pin number 13 as the output. All right, then I've got my loop, my loop starts here. You can see that it'll highlight their matching bracket. So I can see my loop ends in the right spot. All right, then I'm, it's gonna test my push button. It's gonna print whether the push button's at one or zero. If it's at a one, which is the same as saying high, then it's gonna flash the LED, all right? And then it's gonna loop, and it would keep doing that anytime the button's down. If I let go of the button, this should not be true anymore, so it shouldn't flash the LED. So that's how we take these two codes and put them together. We don't copy over certain things. We only copy over the commands that aren't redundant. Don't bring over multiple loops, multiple setups. All right.